assuming we get that far in this game, Kriko's resolution is based off of dice stacking, so you have to like stack d6s, and as long as the tower doesn't fall, you succeed. And if it topples, then you fail. So I needed the cam on this. And it does use a tarot deck, but there's like a prologue that doesn't use any of the systems first. But I do have it slightly pre-prepared. I am going to be using this deck if we get there. Fun fact, I have had this for years. And today was the first time I actually took it out of its cellophane. It was wrapped and brand new. But yeah, I had to go to the bathroom before we started. And when I got back, the dice the dice that I have here was on the floor. <laughs> because uh, the kitty had already played with it while I was not looking. But yeah, these, this deck is, is um, gorgeous. It has gold edgings. Look at that shiny. And very pretty art. These are extra cards. That's a bunch of extra cards. Yeah, the initial, the prologue of Koriko does not use the cards. It only needs 1d6 to roll for prompts. I'm trying my best not to spoil everything so that, because Koriko was kickstarted a while back, the digital version is already out and you can buy it, you can pre-order it on Backer Kit right now. You can probably find it if you Google Koriko a magical year. I will link it in the description and in the chat. Though I think it's only Garmin Zia. Hi, Latte. That's not a toy. <laughs> Whiskers. <laughs> Just don't don't move that because it took me a while to get that in place. <laughs> not a toy. That's fine. <sighs> So yeah, the game was out recently and I I have basically looked through the minimum necessary to play. I have set up my journal. I It's recommended to play on a journal, but I figured it would be easier for you guys to be able to read what I put if I have this up. So I have set that up. They ask you to do an index page. And you have to set up a map with the four suits of the cards. And the map is more, it's, it's less a visual map than a like feels and themes map. So when stuff happens, I am, I'm, I'm supposed to be adding here for the, these are like the places, details or feelings, depending on the prompts. And then I have my skills, which is kind of a character sheet, but we don't have values. I I suspect it'll depend on how good I am at stacking dice, because if I start, if, if the dice start falling, she might be like, what is going on? And come and help me unstack the dice. I actually posted a little video of Latte helping me with the stacks of dice last night when I was trying it. But speaking of stacks of dice, you basically have to stack, and the skills here are upped by things you learn. So when I do things for people, or I put those lessons down here, and that allows me to reduce the number of dice I have to stack for that skill. So that's what this is for. I hope it's long, it's big enough to read the text. You might have to actually full screen this to actually see it, but then we have entries and letters, which is where we're going to be writing all everything. And confidants are the NPCs that we'll be meeting on the way. Also, all the art for the covers on these is taken from the book itself. This has some really gorgeous art. And hopefully we get some donations because I am streaming for Extra Life, which is why I'm using totally not my only thing to roll dice in. And for those of you not familiar yet with Extra Life, the group raises money for children's hospitals around the world. We are raising for the Stollery's Children's Hospital in Edmonton. And yeah, any excuse to use this, I will, I will happily do. And of all my dice, this was the prettiest but also visible dice I own. <laughs> Because I was testing out my other ones and they were kind of hard to see on the stream. 
So, oh, they'll look. High arrow. So that's why I had to choose this dice, which is part of the set I got from Extra Life a couple of years back for Tabletop Appreciation Weekend. Okay. At least he's just here to sniff and not play. He is mature and doesn't do things like that. Right? Alright, so this game is played in volumes. There's supposedly for a full story for your witch, it takes seven volumes. Each volume is a year of travel. The first volume, which I already set up here, is Departure, is the like prelude and is where we create the witch, say farewell to the home village, and journey to Kuriko, which is the village where everything takes place. There's a lot of other text. I'm just scrolling through the PDF. There is a little, I don't know what, what is it, like a quote? Uh, at the beginning of departure that says from this day forth i shall be called a wanderer leaving on a journey thus among the early showers by matsuo basho the narrow road to the deep north all right so it says here the pivotal question at the end of the game is this as your year draws to a close will you stay in kuriko or will you return to your home village so it's important to understand what the village is like and what it means to leave it behind. You are a witch, a young person with burgeoning magical powers. You walk between two worlds. You're a teenager who needs to love and fight and cry and shout, but as part of the next generation of witches, you also carry the burden of an ancient dying tradition on your shoulders. I love that Assuming you're doing this non-digitally, it says, create a new journal entry. Before we begin, we must break the curse of perfection by making an intentional mistake. Mar your journal with a typo, ugly smudge, messy scribble, or other undesirable mark. That's, that's, I, I feel like that calls to a lot of people who like see a blank page and are like paralyzed by said blank page. A bit harder to do digitally because you can correct it and no one will notice that you made a mistake. All right, then it says, introduce yourself. I'm just going to say hello. There. I'm also not sure if I want to keep this styling for this, but we'll see. And then it says we can either copy exactly what it says or edit it to fix fit our style. I'm going to be lazy and use what they say. I started some of it out just to test things out, but we'll need a name. And we do have, I love that they do give you some examples of what to put. So I am not paralyzed by needing a name for this character before knowing anything else. Hey, I'm looking at the names and there is one that's speaking out to me, which is Hazel. So we'll name our girl Hazel. Uh, I'm a 16 year old witch in training and when you first see me you'll probably notice my look look and look. All right from the options given here and it doesn't have to be an option given here we can make stuff up. It says stuff like piercing stare, careworn eyes, restless gaze, coke bottle glasses. Mm, do we want to give them coke bottle glasses? I do wear glasses myself. Easy smile, toothy grin, chewed lip, Fuzzy beard. Fuzzy beard at 16? Eh, I guess some. Oh god, I had a fuzzy beard at 16. God damn it. I never, I was never, you would never get me to admit it though. <laughs> Shaved head, messy hair, silver streak, neat braids, facial tattoos, acne scars, meticulous makeup. Uh, that's definitely not me. Prominent birthmark, calloused hands, perfect nails, stained fingers. Thank you, Garm, for your witch. Ebony dark, dark, mess, dementia, raven way. It would be it would be funny if you if you made a your own witch. All right, shall shall I base her off of sixteen year old me? Is this is this where I'm going with this? I don't think fuzzy beard is the first thing you'll notice, but we'll we'll go with a bottle glasses. I kind of say like silvery hair. It's not silvery. It's like thick 
gold hair. There may not be something that you think is noticeable here in North America, but I was in South America as a 16 year old and my hair stood out <laughs> a lot, especially in group photos. You just had to look for the very, very bright spot in the school photos. That was me. And long nails. I do still wear long nails, but when I was younger, I would wear my nails so freaking long that my parents were always yelling at me. All right, style in style. We have heavy black robes, bright yellow dress, hand-me-down shirt, denim vest, moss-covered knitwear, herringbone coat. You know, I had a, a, a jacket that I loved as a 16-year-old and wore it constantly. It was this like black, kind of like felt, what do you call those? Like long, long coat with a, with a hood. I guess, it's, I guess that's, that's the word, long coat with a hood. <laughs> and I always also wore a steel blue scarf, a very long steel blue scarf. That was like, you'd always see me with that, as long as it was cold enough to wear that stuff, because, you know. <laughs> Sometimes you can't wear a, hood, a coat and scarf, because you will uh, die of overheat, of heat stroke. All right, and Carrie, I had one idea for that would be like a satchel full of art supplies, because artsy wiki. The options that they offer are stuff like Dad's old 35mm camera, one of my mini sketchbooks, a lime green pocket radio, a brass tin of boiled sweets, a cameo locket in coral and gold, a dog-eared almanac from the year I was born, my mom's final research notes, a pouch of soil from my garden, a fallen star in a glass jar. Mostly mundane. I think a satchel with art supplies would work. Now, do I keep writing? Okay, you'll probably also notice my familiar. Name for this familiar. Wait. We have a name. Where the animal that never leaves my side. I feel like I have to pick the animal first before naming them. I, I feel like with the amount of cats on the stream, it has to be a cat. And adjective. Do we make this Earl? Is Earl my familiar? Earl. What? I mean, where'd he go? He disappeared. I'm not sure where he went. I think he knows the difference between me calling him or not. We could, I could also just call him Gray. I could, I could call him Gray, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure where he went. He's, I don't see him in the room. He might be in the bathroom. All right, adjective. How would we, how would we describe him? I want to say clingy. <laughs> but that, that, it, it, it already says that never leaves my side, right? Grumpy? <laughs> Is he that grumpy? He is pretty grumpy. That's because he's an old man. Her bond is so strong that we can even talk to each other. He wishes. Though you probably won't understand us. Most folks from my village would say that I'm... Do we, do we go for the same trait? Okay, friendly, helpful, charming... Ah, uh, I like that introverted is the last word that Garm said, but I don't think most folks around me would have called a 16-year-old me introverted necessarily. If they were older than me, they probably thought I was honestly charming sounds. I always had a way with adults. I think it was the way I talked to them. Yeah, I know, Garm. <laughs> it's just kind of fits me as well but I'm like that weird introvert that's actually really like 
you hear me talking and I, I will not stop. People close to me make it clear that I should always be... Always be what? I feel like I should always be is not quite where I'd go with it, but I'm thinking of like... I was really easily distracted. So I would never look where I was going. How would I, how would I say that? Look around me more? That seems interesting too for, for this witch's journeys thing because it's like you're journeying and, and you're looking for like helping people out and stuff. So not paying attention to your surroundings is, is a failure this witch has to work with. So we have, we're giving this witch a lot of traits. All right. So we need something that Hazel thinks they are and something they'd like to be more. That's the problem with streaming this kind of game. I need to think things over. Okay. Think. Go with pragmatic. And I'd really like to be more. I love that one of the traits is lazy, and I don't think that's what the Hazel wants to be. Any suggestions? And what about grateful? I know that's that's like one of one of my problems is being more no, not grateful. Demonstrative? How oh, does that is that a word? Am I just making up words now? I'm not. Okay. Yeah, that is actually the word I was looking for. Tending to show feelings, especially of affection, openly. Uh, I cannot, for the life of me, demonstrate affection. It comes really hard for me. And also things like gratefulness and all that. Like, I never say the words. I tend to showcase things more with my actions, but not everyone understands that. So then I just come off as rude. Okay, so that's the end of the bio. I, I think we did well there. So we'll leave the bio in that box just so that it's easy to, to come back to. All right. And then we go on to the story. A few paragraphs to set up your impending adventure. Continue the entry you began with your bio. Same as before, use the following section. Copy it exactly or edit it to fit your style. Replacing the words in brackets with a choice from the next page. All right. And this is the other thing about journaling things is that I'm typing a lot and I can't type in fast enough to what I'm actually saying. I'm just glad I can type without looking at the keyboard because that would make this even slower. I actually thought each volume was going to be a year, but apparently the whole story takes place during one year. Well, I presume you'd be 17 by the end of the year. Okay, yeah, I was torn between writing this beforehand and then just filling it out on stream, but I feel like writing all this is kind of part of the journaling gaming experience. Journal, solo journaling game, blah, blah, blah. Words. I'm also not sure how I like Maybe I just don't. Maybe I just turn this into normal text. Oh god, why is it why is it colored? Okay. Oh. All right, so I'm writing this from and we name the village that Hazel is. We have Little Hook, Rose Hall, Summer's Spa, Bonetto, Arikia. Penkun, Carnaby, Nubera, Voden, Olmac, Gristhorpe, Broad, Croft, Lamarche, Indera, Trishal. Those are some weird names. Kind of like Carrie Kia best. That sounds quaint. I've lived. I'm writing this from Carrie Kia, the quiet little village I've lived in all my life. I live here with, and now we need to name the mentor. That is probably going to go missing and then I have to find them, right? Hag of the Hoglands. What a name. The name for the mentor says suggests either an evergreen tree, a perennial flower, a wild beast, a bird of prey, an ancient 
an unkind nickname, a lyrical epithet never shortened. Sonnet. Interesting. What pronouns shall we give sonnet? I feel like sonnet is a very they them. They are god god parent, I guess. People in the village say they're so what's what's sonnet like to to most people? Cheerful, dedicated, peaceful, generous, harmless, stubborn, grumpy, direct, old-fashioned, intimidating. <laughs> I like old-fashioned and the idea that, like, because they're a witch, that's why they're considered old-fashioned. Like, um, because this game is very low magic in the sense that magic has mostly been forgotten, so witchcraft isn't... It exists, but it is not very well... Like, people have moved on from magic. I'm always kind of like wary of saying anything or doing anything when using ad, but honestly, if you're looking at this from the recording's point of view, this is there's no gonna not gonna be ads, so I'm not gonna necessarily call them out. All right, but they can actually be when it's just us. I'm gonna continue reading these intimidating, spooky, sprightly, thoughtful, playful, kind, inspirational, riotous, sensitive, gloomy, forgetful, cutting, critical. Just thinking of one of my authors that I had that. Awesome. She would she would have she would have definitely been like the village witch. Are you calling out my typos now, Garm? Mystery shirts. Oh god. Yeah, that would be fun. To buy a shirt, you don't know what the design is. But would you would you buy a mystery shirt? Alright. Me and my familiar will be leaving on the next full moon, just two days from now, to spend a year away. I hope to, but also want to. Let's see. We have prove that my mentor made the right choice, hone my magic into something truly special, show the world that witchcraft isn't dead yet, stay true to my village traditions. Ha! No. <laughs> that one's definitely no. Uh, find out what a new culture can teach me. Pursue my non-witchy interests. Chill out and enjoy being a teenager. <laughs> okay, mm -mm. I feel like we're making someone who's more interested in the magic side and and like that taking that seriously than someone who wants to chill out and enjoy being a teenager. So maybe hone my magic into something truly special. But what do we also want to do? Show the world that witchcraft isn't dead yet kind of speaks to me. You can drive, Garn. But I also like the whole find out what a new culture can teach me. Wait, did I just call out the same thing twice? Wait, no, it was show the world the witchcraft isn't dead yet or find out a new culture can teach me. Mm. I feel like since we already went with the magic for the first one, we use the other one. Alright, when I dream about my new home, I wake up with lingering memories of two aspects. What do they have? Bright banners against crumbling walls, gnarled olive trees wound with gold thread, dusty libraries hiding rare titles, a uh, great lake dotted with floating palaces. A jumble of stalls spanning a creaking bridge, rival department stores with elaborate displays, the restorative tang of freshly brewed tea, the syrupy waft of warm treacle tarts, charming pickpockets with cheeky smiles, costume musicians on every corner, the sound of an orchestra tuning up, droning voices chanting scripture. <laughs> when I want to go back there. <laughs> Uh, a sacred and terrible machine, a spire of silver and glass piercing the sky. So ideally we want something that is evocative, but also that would like be a draw for, oh, I miss this thing and I want to go back to see it. Kind of as a, as a lure for the whole, do I want to stay away or do I want to go back home at the end? You're not wrong. Alright, we'll use that one as one. And the other one I feel like has to be more physical thing. I kind of like the spire of silver and glass piercing the sky. Though a sacred and terrible machine kind of... Uh, 
Like, imagine wanting to go out and figure shit out so that you can come back home and kind of, like, uncover the truth behind that machine. Dusty Library's Hiding Rear Titles is also it's also a good one, considering my 16-year-old self. That would have been a big draw, actually. I think I'm going to go with that one. I would, I would, one of the best things I liked about going into like a new school or whatever was being able to go to the library and find new books. All right, so then it says sign off your entry however you would like. I'm putting in a little thought there. I'm looking forward to what the year will bring, but I'm also nervous about how well I'll do. That seems very much me. All right, so. But in a subtitle. Okay, so now it's telling me to roll two dice, and I only have one dice, so I'm just gonna grab another one real quick. This is the. Uh... All right. <clears throat> Jeez, the 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 sharp edged one is. I can feel it in my hand. So two and does use one result for a reflection and one for an encounter. And we can shift our result if we don't like the prompt. So we're making, let's try that again. <clears throat> we're making a new journal entry using the answers to the two prompts. I am, I think, going to use these callouts for the prompts themselves, just so that I can keep them on the screen. And instead, reflection and encounter. I don't think I'm going to move things around for now since we're doing this. Okay, so it says, you pay a visit to your oldest and best friend for the last time in a long while. What mischief or comfort do you indulge in together? What hopes do they share for your future? Okay, so here comes the, the, the part I always dread about these, is actually thinking things up on the fly. <laughs> when you're doing this on your own, you can just sit there and think about things, drink some tea. Now I'm on the clock, because I can't leave you guys just sitting there while I daydream. What does the revitalizing tang of freshly brewed tea have to do with any of this? <laughs> oh, because I said drink your tea, yes. But slow on the uptake, apparently. I do find it helpful to, like, pull... And that's something that I guess we always do for this, for, for stuff, but I tend to pull from, like, real life. This is, like, sure... I am now Hazel, but Hazel is also me. So the fact that I based the uh, mentor on this particular aunt in my family kind of helps with things like this. Like, how do I wish I was more like that person? How am I glad I'm different? And I feel like I can pull from those experiences. I don't know if that's something everyone does for this kind of thing. Or I just lack the imagination to make things up on the fly. I do feel like this kind of solo journaling is good for improv training because this is the kind of questions and stuff that you have to make up on the spot for your characters for any role playing game, even if it's not a solo game. It's good to think of this kind, these kind of prompts, and possibly even use kind of like a solo game approach to building a character and fleshing them out more. But being able to pull on this. Now, obviously, when you're with a group, you can kind of go back and forth with other people as well. And in this case, I am kind of slightly going back and forth with you guys in the chat. Even if it is just you and Garm. I guess I said you and Garm. Like, you, the person who's watching this. And Garm. The moderator. Though, to be fair, that is kind of like what happens. We don't have the most users ever looking at our streams. Moderator and private friend. Okay, how do you wish you were more like your mentor? I'm drawing a blank. I feel like I think I know why I'm glad to be different, though I'm not sure I can articulate it great. This is like the hardest part of journaling games. Writing out the info when you don't have anything to start with. I mean, they do give us stuff. What do they give us? It says unending focus, self-reliance, communal spirit, bold defiance. Oh, I think I'm getting an idea. I I appreciate that they give you prompts as well as the questions because it helps a lot. <laughs> I 
how do I wish you were more like your mentor? Uh, okay. So I put down, I wish I had the self-reliance and confidence Sonnet shows when they interact with the villagers. They boldly stick to their ideals and the witchcraft they've so meticulously taught me, no matter the naysayers. How am I glad to be different? Do I want to expand on that idea? Okay, so I put, I'm glad, however, that I am more open to learning new ways and incorporating the old ways into our current way of life, and I'm not stuck in old tradition. For the last time in a long while, what mischief or comfort do you indulge in together? I appreciate that this is set in a time where you have film, because one of the, the prompts I have is a long walk, a quiet drink, a favorite film, midnight hijink. I feel like a quiet drink isn't quite what I would do with my oldest and best friend, but I like the idea of incorporating tea in this. <laughs> the, what was it? The refreshing tang of freshly brewed tea? Restorative tang. Okay, so I spent an evening enjoying freshly brewed tea with my best friend, reminiscing on our old adventures in the village, and laughed at the hijinks we got into when growing up. Uh, what hopes do they share for your future? So, I spent an evening enjoying freshly brewed tea with my best friend, reminiscing on our old adventures in the village, and laughing at the hijinks we got into when growing up. She told me that she wished the best for me, and that she was sure wherever I went, I'd make a difference somehow. All right, so that was day one. We have two days before we leave home. And then we roll for day two. I don't know if I could use sharp edge dice for a campaign. Honestly, this is, this is painful and it's not even a d4. All right, another two. So we'll leave the two for the encounter this time. And we'll go with five for the reflection. Right? What stress dream do you keep having about leaving home? What anxiety about the journey still troubles you when awake? Wow! Calling out the that nervousness that I mentioned earlier, huh? <laughs> Prompts. We have making friends, fitting in, screwing it up, learning nothing. <sighs> screwing it up really calls out to me. This is, this is actually reminding me of, like, because I was, I lived in South America when I was growing up, and then when I finished college, I moved on my own to Canada. And that was terrifying. That was, it was a really terrifying thing to do on your own, even though I was supposedly old enough to do this. But, like, that, traveling to an unknown place, I had no idea about anything about getting a job or anything the only thing i knew was that my aunt was going to pick me up at the airport and essentially give me a room until i got on my feet so at least i had a place to land but other than that it was that fear of now i'm on my own and i have to do everything myself i can't depend on my friends and family for anything yeah it was stressful <laughs> and i think I'm not sure about the stress dream you have, but I, I feel like the anxiety about the journey that like lingers afterwards is that screwing up. Like, what if I don't make this work? What if I am not able to do what I set out to do and have to return home essentially defeated? And that was that was the fear that I had hanging over me when... I was preparing to leave that like I don't want to have to come back because I failed miserably at I don't know existing living I'm sure everyone who's moved away from family at a relatively young age and even not at a young age I mean it's always kind of terrifying moving out and being on your own okay so, I dreamed of traveling to new villages and being turned away with fire and pitchforks for the magic I wield, unable to find a place for myself anywhere I went. The fear of failure lingers past the dreams and nightmares. I hope I manage to succeed at whatever I do once I leave and that I'm not forced to return home. If I do return, I want it to be triumphant. Okay. Oh, and then we have the encounter. This is getting heavy. <laughs> 
And I think that's kind of how it has to be in this case. Like, that's the kind of tone where this game is going for. Oh no, I don't like this encounter. <laughs> Imagine being forced to return home was a failure. Pat Pat Garm, you're not a failure. Oh, not only are we getting a task set before us, we're failing at it. Great, thanks, game. Way to set me up for, for, for all the like fears that we've already typed out. Okay, so the prompt is, your mentor has prepared one final trial for you. What magic task do they set for you? How do you fail to meet it? You can see that they're disappointed. How do they try to reassure you anyway? Wow. Coming right after the dreams of failure and shit. Gee, thanks. Complex potions, windswept flight, secret scrying, rotten blight. What are we failing at? <laughs> I feel like windswept flight would be a interesting one, considering right after this, I'm leaving on a freaking broom. So it would suck to, like, fail at windswept flying right before you leave. It's like, don't worry, you'll be fine. Worst that happens is you fly into a tree. <laughs> like you just did. See, you survived. Now you know what not to do. <laughs> oh, we're going for that one, aren't we? Do we say that, like, the windswept part was made, like, a gust summoned by the mentor to test out the stability of my flight? They didn't warn me ahead of time that this was going to happen, so I just like panic and uh, fall off the broom. That would actually go with the whole doesn't pay attention to their surroundings. All right. There we go. Ah, some of these get long. <laughs> my mentor had one final trial for me today. They wanted to see my mastery in flight. I took off feeling confident and ready. After all, tomorrow I leave on this very broom. But without warning, as I sailed into the sky, a countercurrent of strong wind hit my broom, and with a cry of surprise, I toppled and fell, landing on top of a bush. I wasn't hurt beyond some scratches as I got out of the bush to see Sonnet standing there, shaking their head in disapproval. They informed me I had to keep a wider eye on my surroundings. The leaves below would have warned me of the oncoming gust had I but thought to keep an eye on the ground and not on the sky above. Feeling sheepish and disappointed, they sighed and told me that, now that I knew... I'd surely fare, fare better tomorrow. I will have to do my best to keep my eyes open to all around me. All right, so that's the end of the days left to me. It is time to say goodbye. Okay, so this one does not say to roll. It just says to pick. How am I leaving? A crowd, a feast, a pair alone. Hmm. feel like a... Feast sounds interesting. All right, so a feast. Your mentor gathers your friends and family for a great feast. What do you eat? Who is most open with their feelings? Who makes terrible jokes to cover theirs? You slip out before the meal is over or endure a series of heartfelt goodbyes. What is your last glimpse of your family? As much as I would love to slip out before the meal is over, I don't think my friends and family would allow that. What do we eat? If I'm drawing from my Spanish roots, it would definitely be a paella made by my dad. Which takes forever to cook, I will say. <laughs> which means the party goes on forever and you are starving by the time it's done. <laughs> and and the worst part is is the closer you are to the time when it's ready, the smell of that thing cooking is terrible. Because it's so good and all you want to do is eat. Alright. So. My mentor and parents organized a large feast for the night of my departure. My father cooked a large paella big enough to feed everyone. During the time it took to cook and even afterward, my mother kept giving me advice, telling me how much she'd miss me, and hugging me with questions about how necessary was this and if I'd stay instead. I told her I had to do this and that I'd be fine and made sure to reassure my friend as well while she was less vocal I knew she too would miss me dearly and feel as lonely as I'd likely feel on my journey to start. Split that. It's not till you read something that you realize you have an ongoing sentence that takes forever. <clears throat> I stayed till the end and during the food I'd miss the most after leaving and endured the tight hugs of everyone who came to say goodbye and the pictures taken to commemorate the night. Finally, I got on my broom with Grey behind me and waving to my friends and family, I set off into the night. Okay. 
go to the journey. Now, this is longer than I expected it to be. How long have I been going for? An hour and a half now. Okay, journey. You're on the move, flying high over unknown lands to find a new home. The journey lasts for two exciting days. To begin the first day, roll two dice, reflection, one, and encounter. All right, so we're doing two more days of journeying now. And we can see what I get. I almost expected to get a two again. All right, so reflections first. Five. Flight is tiring, and sooner or later you must rest. Are you finding places to stay or camping out in the wild? We have canvas tents, family homes, quaint hotels, ancient stones. I like the idea of quaint hotels. All right, so I put down traveling on a broom is not the most comfortable. Thankfully, my father gave me enough money to stop at small quaint hotels along my journey, and so I stopped at them to get some nice, comfortable sleep. These rooms were small and sparsely decorated, but the beds felt soft and relaxing after hours. On the counter, I rolled a four. Oh boy, we have a distressed person. All right, so the, the uh, prompt says, Below you, a traveler is in distress. What trouble have they stumbled into? You descend to see if they need aid. How do they react to your appearance? What help do you offer? And do they accept? And the uh, suggestions say broken promise, broken bones, monster trouble, and cursed stones. No, oh, fireballing the first person I, I, I can help. I'm, I wonder if that's... That's totally on purpose. I'm looking now, and all of these rhyme. Yeah, broken promise, broken bones, monster trouble, cursed stones. The first one has fields to roam, and then the last one is just like home. You've got mushroom farming and cattle charming. Yeah, they all rhyme. Um, that is that is a nice thought. I hadn't noticed. I, I guess it's easier for you to, to hear it out uh, than it was for me to pick it up immediately. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it now, and they absolutely all rhyme. That's interesting, too, because that means they had to put a lot of hair into exactly what they're writing. Yeah, the one for the flight is tiring one says, Canvas tents, family homes, quaint hotels, ancient stone. Neat. All right, so we have a traveler in distress. A part of me is unsure still how much magic this, this character has and what abilities she would be able to call upon. I have it has that mix somewhere I don't remember where it said that this is kind of based on like 1950s 1960s kind of like that's where that's the kind of setting that's why you have like cameras and stuff so not quite modern but also not like medieval setting with low magic so I'm I'm torn between broken bones and monster trouble, I can see how I could solve either as a witch. What What do you think I should go with? Broken bones or monster trouble? Bones? Okay. Well, if you'd like to make your own witch and play through their adventure, witches don't have to necessarily be female even. It could be non-binary or male. So far, this is very this is very prompt heavy. I mean, I know that we're yeah, this is basically the prologue, so we haven't gotten into the actual resolution stuff. Like this is all scripted to a point. There's prompts that I'm picking through the dice, but you can absolutely be a girl. I'm just saying you don't have to be a girl. If you want to be a girl, you can be a girl, bud. I will accept you either way. Okay, broken bones. Okay, as I was flying and looking for the hotel I'd be stopping in for the day, I noticed a figure laying by the road below me. Glad I'd been doing as my mentor had warned me and keeping my senses broad, I flew down to land a few feet away and within sight of the person. When I asked if they needed help, they were startled, and while wary of me and Gray, they replied their horse had spooked and they'd fallen and broken their leg. I told them I could attempt to splint it, but they seemed too uncertain of a 16-year-old, so instead I offered to fly to the nearby hotel to find someone to come and help. He accepted this offer, so I left him then my water bottle and flew quickly to the hotel. 
After securing help, I led the people back and made sure they found the man before going back and settling in for the night. The next morning, the clerk had my bottle for me with a thank you note from the man I'd helped. All right, and that is the end of the first day of travel. And we're going to roll for the second one. Five and six. So I used five the first time, so we'll do six and five. A tiny creature decides to join you, hopping on your broom. Is it mundane or fey? How does your familiar react? Oh no. <laughs> I have a cat familiar based off of Earl. That's going to go great. The first, thi the first thing, the first thing I imagined was a moth sprite, which would drive Gray insane wanting to catch it. Because Earl has a thing for moths. He wishes to catch them and eat them. I think that would be funny. I feel like this is the kind of thing that where if you have an idea, that is what you have to do. Like that, just go for it and not overthink it because a lot of these games do have replayability. Like you could do another journey with another person or something and just not use the same prompts. There are six prompts per thing. So hypothetically, you could just do uh, six playthroughs without having to repeat any prompts. I think I've already caught two typos in this. I hope they were fixed before they sent to the printers because I know that the uh, PDFs have been sent out. I don't know where they're standing at with the printers, but this prompt says, is is mundane or fey instead of is it mundane or fey? Small typo, but yeah. I can't remember where the other one was. But I just corrected it when I was reading it out. Early in the day, a small moth sprite landed on the tip of my broom. Evidently tired from flying, they had decided I'd make a good spot to take a break and advance faster. While I welcomed the little fay, my remarking of its presence announced to Gray that we had company. He jumped on my shoulder to see who I was speaking to, and upon spotting the mothy wings flittering at the tip of my broom, he pounced before I could stop him. Of course, the fay was quick to fly into the air, upset and chattering angrily at Gray as they quickly fell behind. The sudden extra weight on the tip of the broom had sent us spiraling downwards. Gray had to hold on with claws as I frantically brought us up to a steady glide, and I thoroughly scolded him for attacking a fay. I'm sure that's that's never going to come up again. We're fine. Early, I am not going to have issues with fay in the future. And, I, and that wasn't even the encounter. That was just, what was that? Reflection. All right, ahead you see a rustic building with smoke gently rising from it. What beautiful landscape surrounds it. It, It is a popular rest stop for travelers, all warm smiles. What service are they famous for offering? I have some ideas for that, especially since we've been using the tea mentions. Garm. Our character is 16, I'd like to point out. The suggestions are homegrown food, thermal baths, routes and maps, healing droughts. Is droughts and baths? A bit of a stretch for a, for a rhyme there. Healing drafts? Oh, is that how you pronounce that? Frickin' English. Okay. That, that, that does rhyme. Thermal baths, healing drafts. English is weird. Okay, so I'm thinking beautiful landscape that surrounds it. I kind of imagine this being like on a bit of a hill and being surrounded by weeping willows and being decorated by wisteria flowers. I'm very clever with names. I'm calling the tea house covered in wisterias and surrounded by large weeping willows the weeping wisteria. Alliteration for the win. I came upon a quaint tea house set atop a hill and overgrown with wisteria flowers, surrounded by large weeping willow trees offering shade to many colorful round tables for travelers to sit and rest. This was one spot I was hoping to stop at during my flight, a well-known tea house called the Weeping Wisteria. Their tea is made from homegrown herbs and flowers and was most refreshing. While I drank alone, I was able to listen to the stories and idle chatter of the other travelers around me and I was much refreshed by the time I continued my journey. All right, and that finishes our journey portion. And we arrive at Kariko, not Kakariko. Damn it. Yeah.
and now to choose. So you have to choose an approach and a welcome from the following sections, and we're using we're creating a journal entry using the answers to the poll. All right, this is the second to last thing we have to do. Approach guided by nature, led by crowds, drawn to the buzz, taken by surprise. What is Kariko going to be like? I feel like given the whole bringing witchcraft to like modernizing it a bit, it has to be something of a of a big city that's like completely different from this like small village in the in in the boonies. So maybe drawn to the buzz, because that one mentions messy hive of activity, industry, and commerce. Interesting that it says, when you rest for the night, what vehicle do you sleep within? Like, why am I sleeping in a vehicle? Our examples say colorful boats, thundering trains, fluttering ships, towering cranes. I like the idea of this being like a coastal city. Maybe it has like a huge lighthouse out on the like tip of, of uh, oh, a peninsula of, of land so it's a port city so i could imagine towering cranes where um large amounts of fish are brought into the uh city if we're going for industry i could also see if, if fish and such is is the main I hate this idea because I know exactly how it smells. But if you had a fish processing plant in the town, that would that would definitely show up. Generally, though, if there is something like that because of the stink, it is pretty far away from the city. There is actually a city in Chile where that is the case. We went there during our field trips for school, and oh boy, the visit to that factory was. I don't. I don't think I got used to the smell. I was so glad when it, the trip was over and we could go back away from that place. But it was, there was a cliff separating the fish processing plant from the rest of the city. You had to go up and then down into this like different area that was, I think, north of the city? No, south of the city. It was south of the city. And yeah, fish processing plants are stinky. There is, there is no way to have a fish, pro fish processing plant that does not smell of rotting fish. What other, what other like industry could it have? Ooh, if it has, if it has fishing, it could also have like a train station. Like that would make it easier to transport the fish to other cities fast enough that the fish doesn't spoil. So like. All that fish that is caught in the morning is sent out via train. So you have this like complex train station that comes in and out of the city. Basically taking fish away and bringing in other supplies since I imagine they would need produce and so on from the outlying villages. That makes me think. Because it says rest for the night, what vehicle do you sleep within? Maybe there's like older train what do you call them? Things? Sleeper cars that are just like off on the side, like on the side tracks that are not being used. Okay, so the city came into view all at once as I flew over the mountain that separated the outlying villages in it. The first thing that caught my eye was the tall white lighthouse out at sea and the grand port with lines I recognized as train trucks. The large station was connected to the harbor where fishermen would unload their catch and transport it inland via the trains. I like how we're like world building as we go. Intimidated by the size and lights and coldness of the city, I decided to check out the train station. I managed to find unused sleeper cars by the side of the by the side tracks. Making my way inside one, I decided I'd harm no one by sleeping there for the night. Also, you know, save a bit of money. <clears throat> the second prompt is called Welcomes. How are the people of the town welcoming me to Kuriko? Hi, Earl. Where have you been? We have curiosity, indifference, apprehension, and chaos. I don't... 
I don't think chaos is a good. Although the fact that I'm sleeping in a in a sleeper car without permission um, could lead to that. Though I almost feel like, given given the air we've given the city, indifference might also be a good one. Just like, mm, oh good, someone's on a broom, you know. Gar, why do you always suggest fireball right to face? There is no fireballs in this game. Look at this boy. I'm calling you Gray in this story. He's like, that's nice, give me more scritches. Can I go back to typing? Have you had enough scratches? And you get to see his fur again. Okay, go to your books. Okay, where was I? Indifference. Are you standing in my... Excuse me, sir. Okay. I may have to refocus that because Earl is, is rubbing against the mic. Uh, hey, mister. You are an hour early. You don't get food until 8 o'clock. It is currently 7. Oh god, I've been going for two hours. <laughs> okay, nope, let's... Uh, let's move you over here. Okay. So, indifference. People here are so busy they hardly notice you. When you're flying around on your broom, nobody looks up. What all-consuming fixation are most people focused on instead? My mind immediately went to cell phones, but this is 1960s, 1950s. There are no cell phones. Um, could be books, I guess. <laughs> Despite this, what familiar tradition is still seemingly honored? And my examples read fashion rules, strange devices, hey, cell phones, little prayers, exchange prices. I'm glad you like the cat cam. I had to, I had to put my my cam pretty low so if he's standing up he is brushing the cam <laughs> and of course that means that it is in perfect range for him to just rub against there we go it is getting a bit dark in my room now that the sun's going down so oh i'm gonna turn on the light there we go i'm not gonna need much of this but i don't have anything else to show you guys so we get to watch that for now. I am almost done with the first volume, so. Okay, nobody looks up. What are they looking at instead? I kind of like the idea of books. Or maybe there are strange devices that they're staring at. Kind of like a, a pad of some sort. Some might even call it uh, a pyropad. Surely, if you can have pure pads in Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild, you can have something like that in another fantasy setting, right? Maybe, maybe it's not quite as versatile since apparently everyone's looking at it. So maybe it just allows you to converse with other people on the go, kind of like some kind of newfangled telephone system they're sending stones that's what they are some short message system yeah they're like sending stones that you can send like 25 words at a time and you have to keep like looking down at it to, to send the message and see what the other person replied to because it like shows up as as words on on this like little tablet <laughs> uh. Such cheeky ideas. Okay, so as I flew about the city on my broom, at first I thought folks would be often looking up and taking note that a new witch was in town. Instead, I realized that my problem of focusing on my feet was shared with those living here. Eventually, I realized it was not their feet they were looking at, but small, smooth stones in their hands that seemed to show words as if by magic. I feel like Country Bumpkin, who has no idea what a cell phone is, explaining what a cell phone is. <laughs> and then. Familiar tradition. Okay, I was at least comforted by the comforted by the appearance of small shrines at certain intersections, where a few pedestrians would stop and give a small prayer or leave an offering. At least some of the old ways remained, even in this bustling modern city. And I ex I I half expect these to be like shrines to fey creatures and that kind of thing, less so of like religious ones. Yeah. All right. 
so we have reached the end of Departure, Volume 1. It says here, as you reach the end of departure, take a moment to pause. Rest for 30 seconds, consider the ambitions you have for your year ahead, and the experiences that might help you realize them. Then you may write a new lesson that captures those feelings. Okay. A new lesson. Lessons go in. So, the ambitions Hazel has for the year ahead. What does she want to do? And how am I supposed to write a new lesson when I haven't exactly... Is it from, like, something I've learned during this first volume, I think? The examples for the lesson says, I helped Farmer Benetto cure his orchard of blight. I broke the curse on Gone Bill's pigskin hat. I stood up to Andres's bullies in the palace garden. I feel like the only thing we've actually done is help that farmer who broke his leg get the help he needed. So I would probably go under care. I guess I can put a number up here to keep track. That way I know that if I'm rolling care, I can subtract one from the dice needed to stack. Done a lot of writing so far. I feel like you could use solo journaling games to flesh out articles, honestly, because it is the kind of thing that makes you think of stuff. And even if this wouldn't be a proper article, since it's just the story of a witch, um, but there are certainly games that are geared towards either stuff like map making or stuff like world building. There, are, I know there are world building games out there. Actually, by the same author as Kuriko, he has one that, for example, has you create a where'd my focus go? Create a ship, and then the the game is about detailing the different hands that ship goes through. So, like the story of the ship and what crews get to pilot it, what kind of owners go through it. Yeah. I think that one's called Orbital. Bucket of Bolts, sorry. That's what it's called. A game of iconic spaceships and infamous captains. Based surely on uh, a certain bucket of bolts uh, from a certain well-known uh, game. He does have a game named Orbital, but that one is, I think, a multiplayer game. Yeah, it is a multiplayer game, so... And then he also has one that I'm sure you would like, Garm, which is called Artifact, a game of legendary items and transient heroes, which is kind of like the Bucket of Bolts, but with a legendary item, be that a sword or not, and who all uses that weapon. I believe you have a game about forging a sword, so that could be used with this to, like, you forge the sword and then you use this other game to see where that sword goes through. Like what adventures it goes through. I'm getting distracted towards the end. I need to write a letter. That's not supposed to. What am I supposed to? I'm going to put, so it says, now that you're ready to, to write your first letter home to your mentor, read the coda and choose two reflections using the answers in your letter. Now, I will say, if you're playing Kuriko at home, you wouldn't necessarily be writing, unless you really wanted to, these callouts that I'm doing. You would only be writing the text below them. I've basically included them for the sake of the stream more than anything else. Um, especially since that requires extra writing unless you're trying to copy and paste from a PDF, which is uh, has its ups and downs. Oh, is that? Uh, I'm going to be living out of that train, aren't I? Okay, I feel like I should do this first and then pick the two reflections. Um, so the coda says, Humble Roof, you've found your new home, but you're still finding your feet. What temporary accommodation have you managed to secure? You're perfectly safe, but it's far from perfect. What frustrations do you have to deal with every day? Why won't you be able to stay here all year? Yeah, let's go for it. So... We'll say we managed to convince the station owner to allow us to stay in one of the sleeper carts that are out of commission. 
this is a sleeper cart that maybe has rusted wheels or something that means it can no, no longer be used, but they haven't. So it's a decommissioned sleeper car, but for the most part, it's still in good condition in terms of living inside of it. But because it's a sleeper car that's de decommissioned in the train station, we have probably at least two frustrations. One, the sound of the trains is very loud, especially early in the morning when the fish is brought to the station. And the second one is the fish itself, because I imagine even if it's fresh, it's very fishy smelling. And I'm sure the, the train cars that are used to transport the fish themselves are probably pretty smelly when they come back at night and settle on their tracks waiting for the next morning's fish to be brought out. So I have to deal with the fact that I am sleeping beside a very fishy smelling area. <laughs> I was able to talk the train station owner into allowing me the use of one of the decommissioned sleeper cars as a temporary home. The station itself is guarded night and day and that provides me protection and the car itself can be barred entry from within, giving me privacy and the car is quite comfortable. Unfortunately, the station is loud when the trains are coming in and out of it and I have to deal with the smell of fish in the morning and the stink of the fish cars at night as they wait for the morning catch. I was also warned I would not be able to stay here long term as when the inspectors came, they would not like to find a young witch living in their decommissioned cars. I will have to find another place sooner or later. And then we need two reflections. Let's see. Okay, I'm definitely taking advice. Not sure how to take the last part, but... So we have journey, why here, advice, small talk, and fiction. Hmm. So I was warned that in some cases, sometimes your character might be embellishing the truth or straight out lying. Because you're writing, all, like all the, the write -in, written text is from the point of, of your character. Even in the like journal entries, it might come to a point where the witch might not be entirely truthful. So I like this one. It says fiction. Make up something interesting or impressive that happened on your journey. What do you hope your mentor will feel when they read it? So I'm going to take one of the things that happened and kind of spruce it up a bit. So the first one I picked was advice. Back home, someone gave you some advice. How has it already proven useful? And... How do you worry it might get you into trouble? And then make something, make up something interesting or impressive that happened on your journey. What do you hope your mentor will feel when they read it? So I was thinking for the advice one to mention how the mentor had basically said, hey, keep an eye on your surroundings and have it be that that is what has proven useful because we found someone on the road that needed help and we were able to help them. But instead of finding help to take to them, we'll say that Hazel was able to splint their leg and help them to the nearby hotel ourselves. Kind of twisting the truth a bit. And definitely hoping that our mentor is both impressed and happy that we're, we're not only paying attention, but that that has helped us help other people on the road to Corico. <laughs> Thanks to your advice to keep my senses on my surroundings, on my way to Kuriko, I located a farmer that had fallen off his horse and broken his leg. I was able to help splint the leg and carry him on my broom to a nearby hotel where he could rest and receive proper care. The villagers seemed a bit wary of a witch interfering, but I think I left a good impression. Maybe... I worry that I may be thought of as a meddling witch if I intervene in too many cases, but surely it's better to help those in need, right? That seems like a good rounding out of reflections and that is the end of volume one so this is where we would start volume two but this game recommends that you stop pause and let things sit for a while before 
you continue onwards. And I was thinking of doing a break and then doing volume two just to go and learn about all the deck and stacking. But I think we'll either leave it for tomorrow. Honestly, if you guys enjoyed it, I could continue running volume two tomorrow. Otherwise, I was thinking of testing out Rune, which is a like souls like heavy on the dice and strategy battle solo game, which is completely opposite vibes as this game was. <laughs> But yeah, it's interesting. It's definitely, especially this one, because it's more more heavy on the journaling side, it's very narrative. Like, you're thinking of things, and then you're... It's, it's like almost crafting a story using prompts instead of doing things on your own. Obviously, we still haven't gotten into the main mechanics of the system, because we we only got through the prelude, basically, and... I, I feel like the idea of not having all of that and until you get to the second volume is interesting because it, it lets you do kind of like a bit of world building first that is a bit more guided and not as as big, I guess, as the second part is where your events and so on are guided by the tarot cards you pull. And obviously when it comes to preparing the suit decks and all that, it means that your your story is going to be very different from run to run. Because you'll have more than six prompts to work with for each section. But yeah, enjoying it so far. Really love the art. Can't wait to get this in person. I, I backed it for the box set, so I'll be getting like the handouts and everything. That'll be cool. Unfortunately, they're still in production, so all I have is the PDF. Or I'd be showing that on stream as well. <laughs> but yeah, so unfortunately we haven't had any donations yet. I hope that tomorrow we have more people. We will have two streams tomorrow. At noon we will have Afterburner, which will be run by Pickles. Garm will be there as a player with another friend whose name escapes me. And then I will be back with Kuriko at 5 o'clock. All times MST, so check us out then. And uh, see you next time.